half hour. If you, if you take away the expenses and the, the gym's cut and all those kind of things, then these are the numbers we're working with. So, so what I factored in here, I factored in your rent, I factored in everything else. These are the kind of numbers you can actually earn. Okay, now, if you, by the way, if you open, open your own business, and you, you still charge that amount, but you don't have to pay all these overheads, okay? So these figures here, you can almost double, okay, in terms of what you can earn. But let's have a look. So you worked 15 hours a week, and you train 30 clients each for half an hour. Okay, now 15 hours a week, it's not, not that much. Okay, um, times that by 30 by 15, you get $450 a week, which equates to about 23 grand a year. Okay, again, nothing special, but a really a really nice base for you to work from. And when I first started, you know, I was, I was doing six, once a semester I did six subjects, um, going off on that, I could still handle 15 hours a week. You know, enough to, you know, students, tend to have a reputation of being fairly poor, okay? Um, you know, I sort of went through and, and I, I didn't experience that, that, um, that at all. Let's say you decided to get semi-serious, okay? And you decided to work a 20 hour a week, 40 clients a week at uh, $30 per hour. Let's just say your, your net is $30, okay? Because you've paid, you've got 60, but let's just say you paid the club, you know, 40%, you paid your expenses, you paid your phone, you end up with 30, 31 grand a year when you're 28 a week. Now, I hate to break this to you guys, but if you were looking for a full time job when you finish this, you know, you probably wouldn't expect more than between 30 and 35k a year. Okay, so now some of you might, might be really happy to earn that. Others might be saying that's not what I'm aiming for, but you know, the reality of it is when you finish and you, you say, I want 50 grand a year, you're going to be laughed at. Okay, why? By the employees, if you go and ask for that sum straight out of the fourth year. Okay? I'm actually doing an MBA at the moment, which is a Master of Business, and, and we're not much better coming straight off, straight off, uh, straight off graduation. Okay? So, this is you know, definitely an avenue for, for a lot of people. Now, 50 clients a week, training a 25 hour a week, you're getting up around 40 grand a year okay? after expenses. 80 clients a week, 40 hours a week. About 60 grand a week a year. Okay, so a 40-hour week working as a personal trainer minus expenses, you can just start to earn some half decent money. Now, I don't know of any, any, any uh, you know professionals that can get that straight out of out of uh, first year. But if you work hard enough and you can have the people skills, you have the business sense to be able to do it, you can earn that. I know several people who are earning that at Z, within Zest at the moment. In fact, I know several people are earning the bottom figure. Okay, which is about 90 grand a year, um, you know, working hard as a full-time trainer. Okay, now I don't want to give you any illusions, and, and the reason they got to that level is because Zest has changed its system now. Zest system now is if you if you pay $250 a week, that's your rent. Now you can charge whatever you want, and you keep the rest. So, so does everyone understand that? So I'm a trainer. Zest is, is the club that I'm working in. I've got to pay them $250 a week, but anything, so I charge my clients, I collect the money from clients, I pay Zest $250, okay, and anything else I keep, okay? So if you're charging $45 a half hour session, um, that might be five or six clients. If you train five or six clients, you pay your rent for that week, okay? Now the guy I'm talking about, I think he trains about you know, 50 clients, 60, 70 clients. Okay, so the first guy pays off his rent, and he makes net whatever it is that he charges. And I, he does, I think he charges a little, a little bit more than that. When you get to a stage where you're in demand, okay, and usually people pay cheap degrees are revered. You know, people pay a lot more for people with a, a university degree than they do for someone who's straight out of you know, fitness or whatever it is that, that they come from. Um, some people have both. I used to lecture at the AIF, and I had people from HM who've done that, got the awesome technical skills. People who come through AIF, they get their selling and communication skills, and they come out unstoppable, absolutely unstoppable. Okay, and they're earning anywhere from you know, 60 to 100 grand a year. But they're, as I said, only the, only people who are really dead keen on their business, they work in it full time, they can't do other stuff. Um, there is paperwork involved as well. It's not 40 hours. I'll bring to your attention. You probably have 40 hours of training and maybe another 5 to 10 hours of, of follow-up calls, 
um, you know, ongoing feedback, all that sort of stuff, filling out your, your, your records for the day. Okay, so th this kind of scenario, when you sit down and work the numbers, for me, again, I, I didn't have this when I went through at HM, but when I sat down and I, I used to then personal train, uh, manage all the personal trainers at Zest, a lot of these guys were earning up around here. Okay, not all of them, only a very small percentage, but it is possible. Okay? And I don't know any nine to five job that can come out in this profession and earn that kind of money. Okay, so money is an important factor. This is something that you should be pricking your ears up about now and saying, okay, let's forget skepticism, let's check this out, let's talk to some people, let's ask this guy more questions. Okay? Traits of a personal trainer. So we've got that, we've got, we've got the financial stuff out of the way. Okay? I, I, when, I, when I used to um, used to sit here in third year or fourth year and I used to listen to people come in and talk, they never used to tell me how much they got paid. They were sort of hiding the financials and I, I had no idea why, but um, I thought that I'd give you that today just to let you know why, you know, the, the real stuff behind, behind, the, uh, behind what I'm talking about. But let's go back to if you wanted to become one, so you're interested, hey, listen, listen, this is something potentially I could look at. I could become really good at this, I could earn this kind of money, okay? If you were paying someone $100 an hour, what would you expect from them? Okay, that's, that's a good question. Okay. Now, I'm going to throw this over to you, because I, I do get sick of hearing my own voice after you know, 20 minutes. Uh, what kind of things, if, if you were training someone, okay, you're paying them $100 an hour, okay? Now, in Sydney, by the way, in Sydney, you know, trainers charge double, okay, from what we charge in Queensland for some reason. Just the cost of living over there is a lot higher. But people pay a hell of a lot more for personal training over there than they do over here. Well, let's say you pay someone $100 an hour, what would you expect from them? Let's get a couple of things you'd expect from them in terms of, in terms of their ability, in terms of how they look, in terms of what they do, in terms of what would you expect? I'd want them to look really fit and healthy. Okay, and yeah, so, so, so definitely. So you'd expect them to, to basically practice what they preach, okay? They're telling you to weight train two or three times a week and then 10 kilos overweight, then, you know, incongruency, okay? Not happening, you're saying something, but you don't seem to be doing it. So they need to demonstrate that they're doing it, yeah, for sure, and if you want to be a personal trainer, you have to look, you have to look fit and healthy, there's no doubt about it. You can't actually walk in and, and um, you know, be stuffed after one session and be able to, to train 10 people back to back, okay? Anything else? What, what about dress, I mean, how do you, Fairly professional, okay. They, they can't be showing up in you know sort of long hair, scruffy, just had a workout, so they stick, <coughs> you know, all those kind of things. Let's have a look. Just a couple of things that I've got down here. They 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 need to be positive when you come in, they can't be negative, they can't be you can't put you down or anything like that. They need to be an exceptional listener. I I, I liken personal training to being a bit of a, a bit of a counselor, okay? Um, I can't share too much due to confidentiality, however, obviously, but um, in the time that I've trained people, people, they spill their guts, absolutely spill their guts to you as a trainer. And some of the stuff is pretty, pretty full on, okay? I can let you know now, you will become one. Expect, expect, uh, expect a lot. But when, you, when you're training them and they tell you these things, you, you, can't, you can't judge them or you can't, you know, put them down or, or you can't, do anything like that. What you have to do is listen and communicate and just empathise with them. All right? That's your role. Your role is purely facilitating a good workout and give them a feeling of, of, uh, of achievement. You need to be knowledgeable. Okay? People ask you a whole heap of questions. You know, what, why don't I do this exercise behind my neck? What, you know, I see people doing the data crunches. Why don't I give you those data crunches? You know, I've seen this guy doing a squat you know, with one leg and, and one dumbbell. How come he's doing that? If you can't answer those questions, that's going to reflect badly on you. Okay, you always have to have an answer. Now, again, HM, hey you guys are technically usually unbelievable. You'd be able to answer any of those questions. So that's not much of a worry for you. Um, immaculate presentation. I, you know, when I used to train with a trainer, as I said, guys used to come out with their shirts untucked and, and you know they didn't shave and all that sort of stuff. And I was, pay I was paying these guys money, and I expected you know a certain amount of money. You're a professional. Just like any other profession, you walk into a doctor uh, surgery and you see a doctor who's you know scruffy and all that sort of stuff. Again, what are your thoughts? You probably wouldn't go back, would you? 
grab her letter and uh, a friend. Okay. At the end of the day, they, you've got to be able to call them up at the end of the day and say this is an awesome session. You know, give them some feedback on where to go and before their next session, etc., etc., etc. Right. But just taking a step back, let's consider a personal trainer versus gym instructor. Any gym instructors right now? Like there's probably a few in the audience who's working in a health club just as a part-time thing. No one. Okay. All right. Well, what I want to do. to turn to the person next to you, okay, and just have a bit of a chat. What differentiates a, a personal trainer from a gym instructor and why? Okay, why do we call it personal trainer? Why do we call it a gym instructor? And if you think of yourself walking into a health club, you think yourself working with someone who's a personal trainer, what would you expect? If you think yourself walking into a health club and they're a gym instructor, what would you expect? Okay? So I'm going to give you about a minute to do that. I'd like you to partner up with someone, give each other at least two options each, and then we're going to open up for sharing. Off you go. Talking, talking is good. Have we all finished? All right, let's share together as a group a couple of traits of a gym instructor. And what's what's the difference? If, if that was an exam question, okay. If that was an exam question. What what would be the difference? Right, what would you write on paper? Gym instructors write your program. Okay. Yep. Would a personal trainer write your program? Yep. Could they do that? What would be the main difference from that perspective? Personal training is follow up. Exactly. Okay, it's much more personalised. Gym instructor is dumbbell, bench press, leg press, that pull down. There you go. See you later. Okay. Personal trainer is okay. Here's the exercises I've done. I've, I've written down for you. Let's do them together. I'll follow you up. How did you go with those? Next week I'll follow you up again. How did you go with those? Would you like a change? How are you going with them? Can you have a bit more weight on? They're very personal. Good. Well done, guys. Any other differences? One more? No? Okay, that's fine. Um, that, is, that is a major difference. Uh, probably the other main major difference is doing the actual workout with you. Okay, gym instructor, we usually we usually instruct you through the, the actual exercise, but the personal trainer will get you to physically exhaust on those exercises and give you feedback, motivation, and encouragement each workout and see you on an ongoing basis. Whereas a gym instructor might only see you once and you know, see the next person the next day and another person another day. Okay, so there's two differentiated roles there. Uh, by the way, personal training normally gets paid 100 times more than a gym instructor as well. Okay, it's probably the main difference. Okay, you'll need to have a, a knowledge of personality typing. And, and, and this personality typing is something we use in the health and fitness industry very prominently. Has anyone heard of disc profiling? Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to give you a 30 second rundown on each personality just so you can, you can get an understanding of where.